Steps of situational awareness. I uh, backed into a concrete column in a parking garage. And, uh, you know, originally I was going to, of course, buy the, the tail lights and replace those myself, but I was going to let a professional do paint work because it's a, a challenge to do. But when I went to the co local collision repair guy who's good at what he does, in an honest place, he, he quoted me uh, $1,000 to repair this scratch and and these scratches and and honestly that's just not something that, that I can afford right now as a student and uh, I didn't want to make an insurance claim and make my monthly payments go up and I sure as hell didn't want to drive around looking like this so I've decided that I'm gonna um, paint this myself and I have no experience with this so uh, it'll be interesting and I, and I thought I'd record it so I'm really my main objective is to work on on the bumper itself I'm, I'm more intimidated by by working on on this this quarter panel as it's a nicer and bigger piece but my my logic is that with this having natural lines like so that that break up you know that that piece I'm thinking that with some I'm hoping that with some YouTube video help and some guidance that I can get this done. So a thousand dollar quote to repair this. I, I was including the other, the other paint thing too, but what I'm doing instead is I bought um, some auto sandpaper, uh, color matched reflex silver, Volkswagen, some clear coat, and some filler primer for, you know, about 20 bucks. So uh, let's hope that this let's hope this works out. I'm gonna start by today by doing some uh, 400 grit sanding on this to kind of homogenize the surface and prep it for for painting the primer tomorrow, which will actually fill in the holes, not the paint stick. Um, one of the goals of doing this is you only really want to sand the areas where you have the scratches. You don't want to uh, damage the, the good paint. So I'm gonna be Focusing my sanding to the areas where where scratches are are evident. All right, so I've, I've gone over it roughly with um, kind of like these heavy areas. I did some. I had about like a hundred grit block, and I did two twenty to try and smooth them out in a circular pattern. And then I've done um, some like some two twenty and four forty touch up on some of the finer scratches. But as you can see, I'm kind of just kind of becoming like a lightened blob. So what I'm going to do is, originally I was thinking I was just going to kind of clean it and get rid of some of this powder, which also gums up these finer uh, sandpapers, but wet sanding is also supposed to be a great idea. And I think the principles of it are that the water and soap act as a lubricant, and then also as a, as a cleaner surface, you're not like polishing in dirt or I guess old paint. I'm not really sure on that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe off the car first with some soap water, and then I'm going to get some wet sand in here and make and make this sanding a little smoother. Okay, so I've um, smoothed it all now to the 400 grit level. And I'm gonna go to the hardware store to buy some masking tape for the next step, which is priming. My understanding is that this first step, you wanna get things uh, fairly smooth, and you wanna get a nice prep surface for the primer to stick to, but that the real smoothness importance is, is after the primer set, and I have a sandable primer, so. I'm gonna get masking tape and, and tape off the areas where I'm gonna put the primer down. And it'd be nice if I could prime it today because I have it's, it's a low wind, sunny, warm, warm day for December. And then uh, let the primer sit for prepping a while. for um, primer now. My my plan is to is to really just do the priming in these these areas where um, the scratches are really deep to kind of build up those areas. I don't really want to put primer. Um, places where the paint's good. So I'm gonna do my, my masking work now and you know, you'll check in when that's done. Now my uh, confidence here isn't, isn't peak. I'm not really sure what area is more to mask than this. You know, if I, if I should just prime this whole area, if I should be more selective in exactly where I prime, but my rationale is there are lots of like small scratches throughout here. It would probably be best if they were filled by a by a coat of sandable primer, and 
in shaping, I, I should be able to do a difference between these deeper areas with the, with the with sanding to, to kind of level out where it's deeper here and smoother there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of a primer on all of this. I'm gonna cure overnight. Put a coat of primer on and car already looks better. Well, and before I put the primer on in the masking tape, I forgot to mention that I used a gloss cleaner to clean the surface. This stuff is supposed to leave uh, no residue. However, I also used some some Dawn soap and a rag to kind of clean a little more. So I'm just gonna let this sit overnight now and tomorrow I'll come back and sand it. So now I have, uh, you can see I have masked. I put a trash bag on the, on the wheel to protect it. Before I masked, I uh, used some glass cleaner and some Dawn dish detergent to clean the area. And then I, uh, I primed. Direction say shake the pan for a minute, do two light coats and a medium coat, and you leave about 10 minutes in between each coat. I didn't really read the directions until I was bored waiting for for the <laughs> primer to dry. And uh, I started with a medium coat and then waited a little more than 10 minutes because it's a little cool and put a second coat on. And I'm just gonna probably let the two coats do their thing and let it dry overnight. I'm doing this kind of late in the day and it's a little cool. I parked here because I'm in an area that has you know, almost, almost closed in to keep the wind down. But uh, you can see that the shadows are getting long. This, and this, this Prius next to me is keeping my car from being warmed globally. And uh, but I'm hoping that it's supposed to only take like 30 minutes to dry, and I've got about an hour and a half till sunset. So I think it'll be enough for it to dry, and and uh, I'll get back at it tomorrow. Uh, the primer dry overnight. And as you can see, I've taken off most of my masking tape and paper. I left masking tape here because when I sand this point, I don't want to end up sanding my, my good paint on this panel. Um, I'm going to be sanding with the instructions that my friend told me to use 600 grit sandpaper to sand, but I have 400 and 800 grit, so I'm going to be sanding with 800 grit. I'm going to wet sand uh, with a little soap and water. I'm going to wrap my sandpaper around this block and see how that works to kind of disperse like the pressure of my fingertips and kind of get like a, a nicer I guess plane to sand in. What's kind of, what I find interesting is that this the sandable filler primer I bought um, actually left uh, you, can, you can like most definitely feel you know a difference here in a line where the, where the, uh, the tape was and uh, so I think the main goal is to kind of feather that out I guess more so feather out just a little bit into I guess the good paint and then uh, get everything nice and smooth so when you when you paint everything looks nice so I'm gonna get to work on that okay so now I've uh, done my fine wet sanding I went over where I'd primed with uh, the 800 grit sand wet, wet sandpaper in doing that I, I found you know you, you're spending a lot of time rubbing the surface I found there are some areas where there are some Impressions that weren't really filled. You know, there's a little small kind of dent there, and has some other areas. And um, at this point, I'm not really sure what to do about it. You know, maybe I should have tried to put a Bondo product or something in there, or maybe a couple more coats of primer. Um, not sure if that would be the right action, or if I should. Um, go to painting now and, and it's going to be better looking than it was originally no, no matter what with with my skill level um, I, I know that I'm not going to be able to make this perfect but I think going ahead and painting now it's going to look a lot better than it did so I finished the sanding I've cleaned it and then I also doing this painting I'm, I'm, I'm utilizing it. there's some kind of clear borders on the car to where you know, the, if the paint isn't a perfect match, it won't be, you know, directly contrasted because it would be kind of lines breaking it up. Um, but on the back of the car, there isn't really that, that sharp line. What I'm going to utilize is, I'm gonna utilize this line and then the line here along my uh, license plate. And so I've scotch brighted this area and this area so that the, the paint will adhere better and then the plan is to kind of do a, a fade 
you know, painting this all, all, and then kind of fading it to a point. Here, not painting up to that line, having a sharp line, but kind of thinning the paint out to here. And then you might see there's a haze because I've scotch sprayed this, but my understanding is that um, putting the clear coat on after after doing the fade will fill a lot in and make it put it back to its original sheen. So I'm gonna um, clean this area some more. Spend a little more time running my hand over it and making sure everything's smooth. And, uh, and I'll be back once I've got it masked off. Alright, so now I've got everything uh, sanded and masked and we've got the area taped off that we're gonna blend. And I've, I've scotch brighted the area too and I've cleaned it with uh, it's an invisible glass, which is supposed to leave no residue. Um, and I'm also letting it uh, kind of sit out in the sun for a little bit and make sure it's 100% dry. I've got a hint of a breeze here. And I'm struggling to make a mature decision on, you know, how much breeze is too much breeze and uh, whether I'm going to paint or wait. So wish me good luck with that. And I'm still... A little worried about some of these areas where I can feel kind of like dents in the plastic that I that I wasn't able to to level out. I'm still holding on to the fact that I have to uh, screw things up pretty badly at this point to make it look any worse than it, than it did when I started. And uh, so rolling with that. And the mindset, that the original goal was to do this and learn something new. I'm still feeling good and I'm pressing up, pressing onward. So so here we go. And I got a, a run in like the first 30 seconds, which is pretty impressive, I think. And uh, so I responded, uh, well, well, it's not exactly how I responded, but what I did to fix it was I uh, let it dry and then I just kind of got the 800 grit sandpaper out and just wet sand out the flaw I had. And we're basically starting from the beginning again. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a really light coat this time. So I've got two light coats on now. And it's, it hasn't really covered the the areas yet, but uh, I'm I'm keeping the the light motto, and I'm resisting the urge to lather these bad boys, and uh, hopefully that'll this this plan will work out soon. Got some coats of paint on now, uh, without a vent. Um, earlier when I, I mentioned I had a kind of a couple flat spots that I was a little worried about, I can see them. Um, and they, and they are flaws in the work. Um, where I am right now with, with goals, though, this is something I can live with. It's, it's, at this point, it's looking like it's gonna look a lot better than it did. And, and that's something that, if, I, if those um, it's a little dents continue to bother me, there's something I can revisit in the near future. So after uh, I let this set for 30 minutes, um, then I apply uh, some clear coat and then this project's done. So, uh, we'll be back with some clear coat. Our, our base color is dried now, and I'm going to uh, sand it with a 800 grit uh, before I put on the clear coat or enamel. The label says uh, 600 grit, but again, don't have it, but I have 800. So I think the idea is just to kind of give it, um, make it a little rough so that the paint again has something to hold on to. So I'm gonna, do some light sanding real quick and then put a, a layer of clear coat on. Did the light sanding and you can see that there's a, a haze now for the clear coat to stick to. You can see the couple blemishes still, yeah, I'm aware of it, but still on the fact that things look better than they used to. So I'm gonna put, uh, a, a plan is two light coats of clear coat followed by one medium coat of clear coat. So i um, about to get that spray on. All right, so the uh, the final clear coat's on and drying, uh, and you know it, it. The car looks a lot better. It's it's far from perfect. There's a you can see that there's there's not a, a perfect color match there. Um, but it's something I can deal with. It almost looks worse on the camera than it than I think it does in in real light. And then I've got um, a couple of flat spots. You know, and so it's, 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 you know, it's an amateur job, but it looks uh, so much better than it did. And, you know, my goals here were to get it to where I wasn't embarrassed to drive my car. 
and to not spend a thousand dollars trying to do so and and so on on that criteria i'd say it's a mission accomplished i've got a new tail light and in, in, on order it should be here any day now i'm put new tail lights in and then you know if you if you back into a concrete column and your and your damage is you have a couple flat spots on your dent you know a little a slight hue difference in your paint that's a pretty good outcome from running into a concrete column you know that and 30 bucks so i'm gonna call it i'm gonna call it a mission success and if it bothers me um i can get back in here and try and fix those flat spots i don't think it will bother me enough for me to pay a thousand dollars to fix it um from this so uh i hope you enjoyed watching this video i enjoyed making it i plan on on making some more videos just kind of like keeping a little log kind of things i fix um have a happy new year